for this kind of thing is actually the cell phone. So I had heard about this place for quite some time. I had read about it. Uh, it's not very well known in the gringo community, but uh, some people know. You just saw there was a there was a gringo at the checkout. It's a place called Tienda del Sur. It's on Los Americas, uh, right near the Don Bosco uh, intersection with Las Americas. And Las Americas, as most of you here know, that's the long strip of the Trandia. One day, someday before we die, we'll run up and down and life will just be a bowl of cherries. So here we are at the store. Um, basically, we're just going to check it out. I'm going to... Uh, flash on a few prices here and there. They're not really cherry picked, just as I'm walking along. I'm looking myself. It wasn't so much I was into doing the video um, as I was just curious about the store. I did ask that pretty girl there um, who was selling some kind of wine from Chile. I asked her about vermouth because the cost of gin has dramatically come down uh, as a result of this trade agreement. It's affecting items as time goes on. And so uh, gin now is, is very cheap. Now, I'm not much of a drinker. I've still got bottles of booze that I bought when I arrived here a few years ago. Uh, a couple of them are unopened. But I do like gin, and I do like uh, gin and tonic, and now and then I like a martini. So maybe once or twice a year, I have a craving for a martini. And when I have a martini, I want olives in it, I want a little splash of olive juice, I want a little bit of vermouth, and I want gin, not vodka. So, I asked her, and she didn't really know because she was just a temp there, but she got somebody who ran and checked and looked, and, and I was told no. I went back to that uh, shelf later and took a look, and lo and behold, I found vermouth. And I bought vermouth and I had a martini. And I probably won't be craving one until sometime next year. But they had vermouth there. Super Maxi doesn't carry vermouth. Now, I don't know if Tienda del Sur is connected with Super Maxi. But I thought this would be a good exercise in pricing uh, once I started looking at this video and I saw some prices that I had focused on. What I did was I went to the website for Wegmans. Now, if you're on the northeast part of the United States, you know Wegmans as being maybe the finest uh, supermarket in the world. It's, it's rated as a business in general as one of the best businesses in the United States. And I love Wegmans. I grew up with Wegmans. Wegmans is not a cheap store, but it's not outrageous. So it was a good comparison. So I looked up on Wegmans the equivalent of what I saw on these shelves. Now I had to do a little bit of math with the uh, milk because the milk here comes in liters. The one I looked at was a quart. But in calculating it out, it turns out that the milk cost was about the same. But here's the difference. The milk that I priced at Wegmans was fresh milk. The milk that I priced here is that ultra pasteurized stuff that can sit on the shelf for six months and it doesn't taste like milk and it's kind of nasty. Um, so I'll take it for, for that. Now in going through this store, what I did notice overall on pricing is in some cases it was more expensive than Super Maxi. I didn't really see bargains in this store. And this is a store for locals. It's expensive. So I actually feel better now about going and buying in Super Maxi. Now you can go to the market. And we were just discussing that in the house of this house a few days ago. 
about going to the market. But here's the downside. You know, you say, well, you can get all your fruits and vegetables at the market and they're cheap. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, if I buy a bag of oranges at Supermaxi for juice, I can use all those oranges. If I go to the market and I buy the equivalent amount of oranges, it'll be half the price. I agree. But I'm also going to be pulling out a number of rotted oranges that they snuck into the bag. Um, and that seems to happen all the time. Even when I think I'm watching, I don't know if they've got this magical transporter device or how they manage to do it. But you know, you think you got a sharp eye and you're watching them, but you get home and you open that bag and sure enough, you're throwing some of the stuff away. If you take that into account and if you take into account certain other things, which I'll mention in just a minute, the Mercado becomes really less of a bargain. Now, potatoes. If you buy potatoes, uh, papacholos, in that's uh, a big potato, as close as you can get to maybe an Idaho potato. If you buy it in Supermaxi, out of the bag, you just can give them a quick wash, peel them, whatever you want to do, you use them. If you get them in the market, they're like meteorites. They have this crusted dirt that I have, for me to clean them, Without taking three years to do it, I actually have to use steel wool and I have to scrub them and scrub them and scrub them. So I get these potatoes and they're inside, they're the same potato, but I have to spend 30 minutes getting enough prepared for a meal for five or six people. It's, it's crazy. It frustrates me. Yeah, they're cheaper, but is it really worth it? I don't know. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's worth it. I, I buy mine at Super Maxi. These are the things you, you can run into. Uh, now, in the last video uh, where I was going through that area near the church in El Centro, I scanned over a couple menus and I got a message saying, "Are these prices for real? Because this is the price that I would pay in a restaurant in San Francisco. I thought everything was cheap, and it was a great comment." I've said this over and over and I got one comment once accused me of lying because I posted up some prices for paper towels uh, in Super Maxi and because he didn't believe it and because it was two or three times more than uh, he's used to paying, he said I lied. But I mean, seriously, does he think that I went through all the trouble to set up a backdrop of a fake Super Maxi with fake pricing? People really need to understand if there's one thing that I can get across in these videos that people need to be cautious about, it is not a bargain here. You are not going to come here for $1,000 or $1,500 or $2,000 and live like a king. You can come here and live a nice life if you're alone, $1,200, $1,500. Sure, you, you can live a decent life. I'm not a spendthrift anymore. In my first year I was, intentionally. But I'm not anymore. I, I tend to be more of a homebody and I'm, I'm not wasting a lot of money. I still spend close to $2,000 a month. Um, and I've said this many times, I could live cheaper in upstate New York, where I'm from. I could live cheaper there. If your sole reason to come to Ecuador or come to Cuenca is cost of living, you're making a big mistake. Is it cheaper here in general than maybe Los Angeles or New York City? Uh, yeah, yeah, but there's a lot of places in the United States that the cost of living is similar or even less. So don't come here for the cost of living. Uh, you want to have other reasons to come or you will have a rude awakening. Now there is a difference here. If, if all you care about in your life is to have some basic food items and cheap rent and you don't plan on doing or living any other sort of life, then you can live pretty cheap here. You can get by four, five, six, seven hundred dollars, but it will be a miserable poverty-ridden existence. 
Um, so I, you know, I just don't see that that's realistic. Uh, you have people that come here with this dream, this fantasy that they're going to live with the locals and they're going to live the way the locals do and they're going to have this get back to nature lifestyle and, and, it, and it's a total concoction in their mind. Now, anything is possible, but you can do that in places where the cost of living is much, much less. So think long and hard about this. Now, I was asked by a couple retiring who had approximately $1,800 a month that they could live on. And how could they do here? How would they do here? And I think they could do okay. I think that um, because they don't eat out in restaurants a lot, uh, because they're not out, you know, wasting a lot of money and they're just looking to go for nice walks and see nice parks and live a decent existence and cook at home, I think they could do fine with that. I think they would do all right. But they're going to need to do a bit of education to learn how to do purchasing because it's very easy here to spend way more than you need to spend. So keep that in mind. As a matter of fact, when people come here, they're always looking for English speaking services. They're always looking for an English speaking lawyer. They're looking for an English speaking hostel or, or uh, you name it, dentist, doctor. And I'm gonna make a statement that will aggravate, piss off some people, but you know, I'm sorry, I'm not here to please everyone. Most or a good portion of the people that are English speaking providing those services in a way are preying on you. In other words, they're charging a premium. They're charging more, they're charging extra, they're charging more than you need to pay for the simple fact that there's some communication going on. Now, if communication is a problem, I would suggest another route. Rather than go and pay way too much for all of these different people, hire yourself for 20 to $30 a day, uh, what I call a cultural guide that will speak English and go and represent you. In the long run, you're gonna save a lot of money. You're gonna save a lot of money. I was told about some dentistry work that somebody had done because it was a gringo, uh, a, a, a dentist designed to work for gringos. And he said, yeah, it's about half price in the United States. But in actually considering, you know, what he was having done, it should have been 25% of the cost of the United States. So he's paying double what he would pay for a good or better dentist who didn't speak English. So that $30 a day to set things up and maybe go with him when he goes in would be one heck of a bargain, bargain considering the thousands of dollars that he's spending and overspending. So certainly consider that. Pricing is, a, is an issue here. You need to learn how to uh, negotiate and navigate it. Uh, you need to be careful about what you're doing. Basically, you need some really good advice if you're coming here on vacation or if you're going to live here. So let's wrap this video up. You know you could.